All right, we want to talk about a parabola. So what we've done so far is we've talked about lines or linear functions. And remember, a line in math is always straight. So we can have a diagonal line, we can have a horizontal line, we can have a vertical line, but this in math is not a line. Okay, that's a curve. So how do we know if something is a parabola? We're going to have y equals, or we'll have something like f of x equals, and the biggest exponent after that equals sign. After you've solved for y or after you solve for f of x, the biggest exponent will be 2. Okay? Remember that your exponents, because we're using um, polynomials, your exponents can only be counting numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, so the biggest exponent you can have is a 2. Once you have a 2 as your biggest exponent, when you graph it, it'll make a parabola. So we call these quadratic equations. Okay, so a quadratic equation, when I graph it, will make the form of a parabola. Okay, so there's my parabola. It kind of looks like a U, but it starts off steep and it kind of sort of flattens a little bit and then it goes on back up. Okay, so a quadratic equation, when I graph it, will make a parabola. So a couple things I need to know. Will this make a parabola? Yes, it will, because the biggest exponent is a 2. Okay, if I have x to the third plus x squared minus 4, will that make a parabola? No, it will not. It has an x squared in it, but it's not the biggest exponent, so that's a no. Okay, I've got x squared. Will that make a parabola? Yes, because the biggest exponent is a 2. Okay, I can have x squared plus 4x minus 9. Will that make a parabola? Yes, it will. Why? Because the biggest exponent is a 2. Now, this one is opening upwards. So think about it like a bowl. I'm saying bowl. Okay, think about it like a bowl. When it rains, it'll fill up with water. Okay, so he's opening upwards. That means it's leading off positive. Okay, so whatever the coefficient is on the term that's squared, that tells you if it's going to open up or down. Okay, so if I have something like a negative x squared minus 4, I know that that's going to open downwards. Okay, that's supposed to be an arrow. He'll open downwards because I'm leading off negative. Okay, I don't care about anything else. I just care about the fact that I'm leading off negative. What if I have something like this? A negative x plus 2 squared minus 5. Okay, if you'll notice, your biggest exponent is still a 2. Because what does this mean? That means x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so when I FOIL that out, I'll get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So what do I mean by FOIL? First, so the first term times the first term is going to be x squared. O for outer, so FO, the outer term is 2 times x is 2x. The inner term is 2 times x is 2x. So 2x is from the outer and 2x is from the inner makes 4x. And then L is your last terms in each set of parentheses. So 2 times 2 is 4. So I have foiled him out. So I know that this is quadratic. What do I also know? I know that he opens downwards, so he'll look like this when I graph him. So come back up here. When I graph a line, okay, when I graph a line, there are two things that make every line different from another, and that is where it crosses the y-axis, which is called your y-intercept, and how it moves, which is called your slope. So your y-intercept and your slope. So that's why we have y equals mx plus b. That's your y-intercept, and that's your slope. So that makes every line unique from every other line. So parabolas are a little bit more exciting. What makes a parabola unique from every other parabola? Okay. First of all, it's going to be its vertex. Okay. Its vertex is where it changes direction.
Okay, its vertex is where it changes direction. For instance, let's just draw this one again. If it, that's supposed to be a parabola. All right, as you read this thing from left to right, so notice as I'm reading it, it's coming down, correct? But you're like, there's an up arrow. That up arrow simply means it continues in that direction forever. But as I'm reading it from left to nine, the graph is going down. What happens when I hit here? All of a sudden, the graph turns and it goes back up, okay? So it comes down and then it goes back up. So wherever he changes direction, which is gonna be right there, is called the vertex. So I need to know the coordinate of the vertex. Another thing that will make a parabola unique from any other parabola is does it open up or down? Well, we already figured that one. If it leaves off positive, it'll open upwards. If it leaves off negative, it will open downwards. Another thing is gonna be its x-intercepts, okay? Where does it hit the x-axis? So wherever he hits the x-axis will make him unique from every other parabola. And then the last one is gonna be your y-intercepts. Okay, so now I wanna go in and kinda of sorta of talk about these for a second. You got two ways to find your vertex, okay? If it is in standard form, then the vertex is screaming in your face. So I'll have f of x equals, and then I'll have x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so you will have a chunk squared, so a chunk meaning I've got parentheses, squared plus k. Okay, your vertex is h comma k. In other words, take this number out, change his sign, Take this number and leave it alone. Okay, so back up for a second. If I look at this one back here, what was this one's vertex? I've got a chunk squared. So this thing's vertex was at negative two comma negative five. So change this thing's sign. So instead of positive two, it's negative two. And then write this one. So negative five is negative five. So this thing has a vertex at negative two, negative five. So if I plot that, here's negative, you can't see. Here's negative two, here's negative five. Well, what do I know now? He opens upside down. So he's gonna go like this. And so he'll, he'll look like an arch instead of like a U, okay? So that's what he looks like. Well, now where does he hit the x-axis? Does he? He will never, ever, ever touch this axis because the tallest he gets is right here. Okay, so where does he hit the axis? He doesn't, okay? He never hits the axis. Now, come back over here because um, I need to finish up vertex. If you have a trinomial form, okay, and this is gonna look complicated, you've got an ax squared plus a bx plus c. Okay, your vertex is gonna be negative B over two A. So change your sign on this coefficient. Okay, change your sign over two times this coefficient. That will be your X coordinate. Once you know your X, and you're gonna get sick of me saying this, anytime you need to know why, shove your X back into your original equation. So now that I know what X is, okay, I can go back and shove that thing in to my original equation, which all that means is evaluate your function at negative B over 2A. Okay, so that will give you a coordinate. So come back over here. If I have, let's do this one. Okay, it's going to be ugly because I made it up. All right, so I've got a trinomial. I have a negative B. Okay, so this is a trinomial format. I want to know the vertex. Negative B will be negative four, okay, over two times A. Well, what's your lead coefficient? It's a positive one. So two times one is two. All right, sorry, my phone rang. All right, so I've got a negative B. So I change the sign on my middle term to be negative four over two times one, because remember there's a one there. So that means my X coordinate is actually negative two because negative four divided by two is negative two. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Whenever you need to know Y coordinate, 
shove it back in your original equation, and then your y value will pop out. Okay, so what's the y coordinate of my vertex? The y coordinate is going to be, well, x squared is going to be negative 2 times negative 2. So negative 2 squared is 4 plus, okay, 4 times negative 2, because you're shoving in a negative 2. So that gives you negative 8 minus 9. Okay, so 4 uh, minus 8 is negative 4, minus 9 is negative 13. So you got two ways to find your vertex. If it's in standard form, it's screaming in your face. And if it's in trinomial form, you got a little quick way to get it done. Okay. The last thing is um, for your y intercepts, I'm going to come back to x intercepts. Okay. For your y intercepts, is all you do is shove in zeros for x because here's what you got to think. If I plot this point, so make, make up a number. I bet that point is something like 0, negative 3, okay? What if I plot this point? Well, then it's 0, negative 4, okay? What if I plot this point? Then it's 0, 5, okay? So regardless of where it is on this axis, your x-coordinate will be 0. So if I'm asking you, where does this thing hit the y-axis? Well, you're going to say, I know it's 0 something. 0 what? I don't know. So you're going to shove in a zero for x, and anytime you shove in a zero for x, y pops out, okay? So that's how you're going to find it. On your vertex, a while ago, I figured out the x-coordinate, and then I found my y-coordinate. For your y-intercept, you shove in a zero and tell me what happens. So on this one, this would be zero squared plus four times zero is zero minus nine. So you would have had a y-intercept at negative 9, okay? Now, um, x-intercepts, we can handle a few different ways. We can factor, okay? We can use the quadratic formula. Or we can um, complete the square. But I'm almost out of time on this video, so I'm going to hit that when we come back, okay?